Hi guys, and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve, and today we're going to be reviewing the Spectin Zone SP0019. I received this watch for free. I don't have to send the watch back, but no matter how I get a watch in on this channel, you're always going to get my honest opinion every single time. And if by the end of this review, you find yourself wanting to pick one of these up, I'll be leaving a link down in the video description. That is to the official Spectin Zone store on AliExpress. That is an affiliate link. If you use that link, you're not going to pay any extra. It'll just earn the channel a little bit of commission and help keep things running. So I really do appreciate the continued support. The retail price for this watch is about 85 US dollars. That's before any taxes, customs, VAT, coupons, etc. Uh, they do participate in the sales. So if you are patient, you should be able to shave off just a little bit on the price. The watch case is made of stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal, screw down crown, screwed in case back, 50 meters of claimed water resistance, and the watch is powered by the Seiko VH31 sweeping quartz movement. So Specked and Sewn, you have to be pretty careful when you're buying one of them. They tend to use a lot of renders and no real images of the watches. So they look fantastic on screen, but how are they in person? Well, uh, my sample size with this one has now grown to two. My first one was quite disappointing. Um, so yeah, what do I think about this one? I say we get into the full review, but before we do, let's do a quick wrist check, wearing my Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical. All right, so let's get into the dimensions. Got a case width of 34 millimeters, and a thickness of 9.3 millimeters. We have 20 millimeter lug width, lug tip to lug tip of 44 millimeters, an overall length of 45.3 millimeters, and sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with two links removed it weighs 120 grams so i actually think the size on this thing is pretty darn good almost spot on for my wrist um, 34 millimeters 34 millimeter diameter watch a circular one would be way too small uh, this one is just about perfect pretty short lug to lug as well these square watches they do wear a little bit bigger uh, i like the fact that it's 20 millimeter lug width as well the thickness is nice and thin too i believe they send, sell the same watch with a miyota uh, with a little bit thicker case. So, um, yeah, I think the uh, the VH31 is the way to go, personally, because a square watch that's, you know, over, uh, you know, 10 or 11 millimeters thick uh, just doesn't look as good. So this one, I think it looks really nice. I do like the way that it wears, actually. Um, I feel like the bracelet, it, it drops straight down enough. This is as tight as it goes. Um, and then it, it, it kind of wears like a bangle as you can see there uh, but for me it wears fine i think for smaller wrists it's also going to wear fine um so yeah i'm gonna go outside right now and throw this on my wrist for you hey here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist and i think it actually looks pretty good i like the size of it square watches they wear a little bit bigger than normal watches so yeah i do think this one looks pretty good this quartz version is nice and slim like i mentioned there and it does have a little bit of curve down so i think it actually looks pretty good and hugs the wrist nicely here we are in some more direct sunlight and you can see there crystal is actually pretty decent does a pretty good job of keeping the dial nice and legible uh, it doesn't really get washed out too much it is just a little odd just because of the the shape of it but uh, yeah i think it actually looks pretty good give you a good good view of the bracelet as well feels balanced on the rest i do have it pretty tight just because there's no micro adjustment we'll talk about that a little bit later but i do actually like the way that this thing looks what do you guys think? Now, sadly, the spring bar holes are so close to the case that I can only fit one strap on it. So I'm going to go throw one strap on it real quick, and then we can get back to this review. And like I mentioned, this is the only strap that will fit it. This is a Vario vintage leather strap. It's a pretty thin strap, and that's why it can fit it. It's bumping up against the case, so it is hitting the case, but it's a really nice and clean and seamless look there, I think. And it does, I mean, it just it looks really good. Uh, much nicer than the uh, the bracelet in my opinion. So uh, if you want an option, there's an option for you Otherwise, you're gonna have to stick with the bracelet most likely. All right, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review All right, Let's talk about the case finishing so case finishing is a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces You have a polished bezel as you can see there which sits on top of the mid case uh, Pretty nicely done. I've got no major complaints with that. It seems to be polished to a, a nice standard um, and then you have brushing on the tops of the lugs, vertical brushing, which does look pretty good and consistent and matches with the bracelet nicely. Um, so yeah, no, no issues there really. Uh, I will say there's some little tiny gaps. So you, if you look at this corner here, you can't really see a gap there. I'm talking about where the mid case meets the bezel. Uh, but if you look up here, there's a little bit of a gap. It's just a little nitpick. It's the same on this corner here. 
uh, and then it's pretty tight down there. So uh, I'm not really sure how the uh, assembly of this watch goes, but uh, just something that they can work on, focus on in, in the future. Um, if you flip it over to the case sides here, you can see pretty nice turn down to the lugs there. You have an unsigned screw down crown. It's uh, it's fine. It's a, it's a good size. Um, let's see what it is here real quick six millimeter uh, so it's a six millimeter screw down crown it's got enough grip on it and it's the screw and screw out action is nice we'll talk about it here in a little bit but uh yeah overall pretty happy with the case finishing on it you get these nice polished chamfers as well on the case so there's a little bit of decoration going on i think they did uh, a satisfactory job uh, it's nothing fancy nothing super fancy but uh, I don't see anything uh, kind of out of the ordinary for the price point. So, um, yeah, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the case finishing. Flipping it over to the case back here, you have a screwed in case back, eight screws holding it in place. Uh, it's done pretty nicely. It's a vertical brushing there. You got your spec and some branding and then a little spec sheet down there at the bottom. Everything is done pretty nicely. All this is nice and soft and rounded off. So, um, again, it's a, it's a very comfortable watch to wear. Uh, I have no real complaints with the case on it. They actually did a pretty good job on this. All right, let's talk about the crystal. Positive four sapphire. It is positive four sapphire. So it's nice that we have a sapphire crystal on this thing. It's actually a pretty decent sapphire crystal. I'm not sure how it would show up on a darker dial, but on this light or white dial, uh, I think it works fine. I've got no real issues with it at all. Um, you can see there, there's some weird reflections going on, but that's just the the nature of the shape. Uh, it's a a a curved crystal this way. Uh, it doesn't curve this way at all. So uh, so you can see here, it does have a little bit of distortion there. So it's probably a flat crystal on the bottom and then has the little curve on the top. I think it actually looks pretty good. I don't know if there's any AR coating on it. I don't see any color to the coating if there is some. Um, but I think for this watch, for this style, uh, the crystal is actually pretty decent. So getting up real close and talking about the dial, uh, the dial is actually done pretty good. Everything seems to be printed nice and square. You have your circular time track on the inside there with the Spectin Sewn branding. I don't mind the branding. I know they're they're sounding fancier than they really are, but uh, it doesn't bother me too much, I guess. Uh, nothing down below, which also doesn't bother me. Usually the, the balance of that kind of throws me off, but no issues here. You got your Roman numerals around the outside. Everything is done pretty nicely. You have a matte white dial and then you have your black printing there. Everything is printed nice and crisp. I mean, when you get up real close, you can kind of see some fuzziness, but uh, for the most part, uh, you know, at, at eye distance away, you don't really, you don't really notice it. The handset that they chose is completely different. I mean, not completely different, but pretty different than what is shown on the, uh, the page. So that's just something to note. I don't think they look bad. Uh, they, they're a pretty good size there. They're, they're sized perfectly for that inner circle there. Uh, the renders actually show the hands, uh, coming out past that inner circle. So, um, yeah, it's just something to note. I don't think they look bad at all. I think they're good size. They are loomed, uh, but the loom is absolute garbage on the hands and there's no loom on the dial. So I'm not even going to bother showing you guys a loom shot. Um, so I think overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the dial on this thing and the hands. Um, the second hand you can see there, it's actually too long. It reaches out past the minute track. I wish they would kind of shorten that to match the minute hand. Um, yeah, it's just something to know. The, the hand size is just a little bit off on this thing, but uh, I think uh, for the most part, it, it looks fine. And I think the dial itself is done to a, an okay standard for the price you're paying. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It's not, it's not going to blow you away or anything like that. There's no real texture to the dial and there's not much depth to the Roman numerals either. So, um, yeah, it's just okay, but it is printed nice and square. And I think that the design is actually done pretty nicely. All right, so let's talk about the movement. The movement is the Seiko VH31 sweeping quartz. So you have four ticks of the second hand every second. So you get kind of that mechanical look, uh, but the accuracy and reliability of a quartz movement. I love these movements. They're great. I got about a two year battery life, I believe. Um, they hack, there's a, there are no date movements, so you don't have a ghost date position. This one is operated by this three o'clock screw down crown. Like I said, you get a nice satisfying pop out there. First position does nothing. Second position, hacks at the movement. This jumps right into the time setting. Everything is done nicely. Everything is aligned nicely. Um, so yeah, I've got no, no issues with these movements at all. I think the accuracy, stated accuracy is uh, plus or minus 20 seconds per month, but these things usually run uh, under five seconds a month. I mean, they're, they're very accurate and very reliable uh, and they're going to serve you well for a, a, quite a while, I think.
All right, so let's talk about the bracelet. The bracelet is 20 millimeters and it does have a slight taper down to 18 millimeters. Um, it's solid links as far as I can tell. Just one solid link. You can see how it's all put together on the backside. It is a little bit of a hair nipper. Um, I've, I've noticed it pulling some hairs, especially when I'm putting it on and taking it off. Um, but once it's on the wrist, I, I do have it buttoned down a little bit tighter than I normally would a, a watch like this. So, um, yeah, it doesn't tend to move around and then it won't pull my hairs. But, um, yeah, just something to note. It is a little bit of a, a hair puller. Um, the, uh, the bracelet itself is okay. These, these screws here, they're just decorative and you can see that the screw heads are not lined up at all. It's not something I expected to happen, but it would have been nice. Um, the first link here you can definitely see that there's a little bit of a gap it doesn't look great all the rest of them are, are fine you can still see the gap in there but um, i think they look they look okay the bracelet is held together with push pins as you can see there i had no problems resizing this thing um yeah i, I think the bracelet overall like there's not a whole lot of articulation with the bracelet but uh, it seems to be done in a manner that it doesn't really matter um, it's going to fit most wrist sizes i'm going to say so um, yeah i think you if you're worried about the bracelet not fitting you i don't think it should be an issue at all um, the finishing on the bracelet is done fine it matches the case nicely it's not anything that's going to blow you away um, but it's, it's unoffensive brushed fully brushed as you can see there um, and then i did notice uh, let's see if i can find it here on this side here you can see some of the screws are still exposed there so they just either got sanded down too much or not enough. Uh, it's just something I noticed that I'd point out to you guys. It's not on all the, the links, but uh, it is there. You can kind of see it on that one too. Um, that's just one of the final finishing processes that they, they just missed. Um, you have a branded, specked and sewn branded with their little seagull or whatever the heck that is. Um, butterfly clasp. You guys know I don't like butterfly clasps. Um, this one functions just like all the other ones. It's fully milled on the inside. The tolerances are okay. I mean, you can see how much slot there is there. Um, it, it's, it doesn't really translate to, uh, to rattle or anything like that. Um, it's one of those clasps where you can close it either way. So that's nice. Um, I think the branding looks good. I think the clasp itself looks good. It's not really sharp. I mean, it, is, it feels sharp here, uh, but it didn't really bother me on wrist too much. So uh, as far as butterfly clasps go, it's uh, unoffensive uh, and it functions fine. And the tolerances in here seem to be pretty good. Um, so yeah, no real complaints with the bracelet. I will say the spring bars that they use are total crap. Um, they, they need to be bent into place. Um, this thing arrived with one of the spring bars not seated correctly. Um, and it took me a while to get it seated and it takes every time I take the bracelet off uh, it takes a while to get it back on um, so yeah the spring bars are not great the tolerances as far as the the hole in the end link and the hole in the case they don't line up great um, the holes in the case of themselves for the spring bars are super close to the case so throwing a strap on this thing was a chore as well most of my straps would just wouldn't fit um, I got lucky and found one that would and that was what you guys saw in the wrist show um, so yeah the bracelet itself uh, I think is is again it, it's fine. It's not going to blow you guys away. Um, the bottom edge of this thing though is quite sharp. Uh, I can feel every single one of these little corners right here where my thumb is. I can feel those when I rub my finger on that here, and it just feels nasty. This feels really nasty and sharp, um, and I can feel it on the wrist. So um, it's not the most comfortable bracelet, and especially without any half links, without any micro adjustment. You're going to have to wear this a little loose and it can pull some hairs or you're going to have to wear it a little tight um, and you're going to feel that on your wrist. Um, if you guys are lucky and you get the perfect fitment, it should be fine. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tough. Um, so yeah, just something to consider. The links are pretty short, but um, yeah, it's just something that you guys should know. So there you go, guys. That is the Spect and Sewn SP0019. I think if you're looking for a square or rectangular dress watch, this is something that should be on your on your list. You might need to swap out this bracelet if you don't get a good fitment. Um, I think you can actually wear this on the bracelet if you get a good fitment. I, I was able to wear it all day, uh, and it didn't really bother me too much when I did pull it off. It, it you know left some marks on the wrist, but um, other than that, it's been fine. I like that it's thin. I like that it's not a total ripoff of a, uh, a Cartier Santos. Uh, I know they made this watch to begin with as a Cartier Santos uh, clomage, uh, and then Cartier put a put an axe to that, put an end to it, and sh and shut them down. They had to redesign the dial and redesign the bezel. Um, so yeah, that's why it kind of looks like a Cartier uh, Santos, but not really. 
Um, so yeah, pretty interesting, but I do like the fact that they came up with an, uh, you know, a mostly original design, uh, and it does actually look pretty good, and it's fairly well executed. For $85, you can't expect too much in a watch like this. Um, so yeah, I think for the price you're paying, I actually think it's pretty decent. So um, yeah, I, I think if, you, if you're if you interested in this, I, I'd say pull the trigger, just know the shortcomings, the bracelet's not great, the loom sucks. Um, but the movement is good. It's got sapphire crystal. The finishing is decent enough for the price. So, um, and I think looks wise, it looks excellent. So, um, yeah, I, I'd say buy it with confidence. So uh, I think that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.